Hello, everyone. Pause the try here, taking a quick look at Monos the Hands of Fate, Director's Cut, uh, a game based on the incredibly bad film, or so bad it's good film, Monos the Hands of Fate, same name. Uh, this was made by Freak Zone Games. It was originally a mobile game and was ported to PC and um, scaled up and such for that. I'm actually going to turn the grain effect off. I don't want to take away anything from the game, but I think actually some of the art and stuff looks pretty good. So I don't want to take away from that. Um, this is a very short game, but uh, I want to get into it here and I'll explain more as I go along. I'm just going to play on normal. Uh, I did try playing on Nightmare and it is it might actually be impossible. So we get our story here. I really like these little cutscenes. I think the art on them is really, really good. So we're lost by the Valley Lodge. So. Here we are. And I'll actually show off the, uh, the film grain in game too. So we have a continue option here at any time, so let me uh, just show that off real quick. And we'll continue. So there's the film grain. You know, it adds something. If you like it, you can keep it on. If not, um, you know, turn it off. For the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it off just so it's, it's more clear coming through. In the recording. And you'll see an option there, uh, Torgo game. That's something you actually unlock after you complete the game. Alright, so here we go. So, this is an action platformer, and it's in the difficult vein. This is made by the same developer that made the AVGN game, which was, of course, an incredibly difficult action platformer. Uh, the, this is also, uh, should note, is a review copy provided to me by the developer. Uh, and the reason I ended up checking it out was there's some negative press going around about it. And I kind of wanted to check it out for myself. I was curious. Um, seeing conversations and such on Twitter, I got kind of curious about, you know, is it really bad? Is it just a bad game? Is it, you know, flawed? You know, what's the deal? So my initial, I guess to kind of spoil my initial impression on it, is just that. Oh, here's a hand of fate. We find these, we get max health. Find all of them, it's considered basically a 100% run. Um, I guess the, the quick about it is that I don't really think it's a bad game. Um, it's short, you know, it was originally a mobile game, and it's, you know, it's five bucks on Steam. It's not a particularly long game. I think there are one or two sections that are perhaps a little more unfair. So here's Torgo. Uh, he is very jittery, apparently that's the way he was in the movie. I've never seen the movie either. That's something I've never seen the movie and never seen the Mystery Science Theater episode about it. Um, so there are some jokes and stuff and references in here that people will get that I did not. But it didn't hamper my enjoyment of the game. So you see we have a shotgun here. We actually keep that until we get hit. And the shotgun does, I think, almost three times as much damage, even if you only hit with one bullet. And that brings us into stage two. Uh, before I f continue what I was saying before about the difficulty on the game, I actually want to... Um, I'm actually going to skip most of this level and do a cut into a later level. Again, I don't want to show off too much of the game, because if you're going to buy it for yourself, I mean, you're going to have something left for surprise. There is something I do want to cross first, though. There is a sound effect here that I think will rub people some people the wrong way, but I think it's just a joke sound effect from either the movie itself or the Mystery Science Theater episode. Yeah, this guy. So that's a screaming skull. I'm pretty sure it's a joke. Um, it's actually the volume on it isn't actually that loud, but I know that bugs some people. So I'm going to do a quick jump cut here. Um, I'm going to go ahead a couple of levels and so I can show off some other parts of the game and then I'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay, so let's resume here. Uh, so this is level four, and the reason I want to show this off is this is a level that was actually adjusted in a patch. This is the 1.01 version. Um, a couple of enemy placements were adjusted, and there is a flying section in the following level that also was adjusted so that it uses your health pool rather than just being one-hit kills. Essentially to make the game a little more fair. Uh, but this is a level I think a lot of people had a problem with because it's very dark, and I think it kind of emphasizes what people might have a problem with the game. And I want to give some thoughts about that. So we have, you know, 
What a terrible night to have a curse sort of joke. So that right there shows you right away that these crack blocks are uh, breakable. You stand on them, they will break. This is an auto scroller too. You also see it's also very dark, which means you can't see ahead. And there's a couple of stages in the game like this. Not all of them are auto scrollers. Some of them are uh, just regular movement. But I think um, I think there's one regular movement stage like this, and then another auto scroller. So I think part of the problem that people have with this game and why they say it's unfair difficulty is, is um, it kind of looks like Mega Man, but it plays more like Castlevania in the sense that you need to be very careful about how you move. You don't want to just rush ahead. Ah, I lost my shotgun there. Um, you can't just rush ahead. You have to carefully... Oh, or that happens. You know, see, I have, I have eight lives. I picked up all the extra lives, as far as I know, in the previous stage. And there are frequent checkpoints, too. So if you die, you don't go back to the, all of the beginning of the stage. If you get a game over, um, you can continue on the stage you were on. Also, I lost my shotgun again. Um, but yeah, so like here, you know, if I just jumped across, well, you'd think, oh, well, that's not fair. You know, you can't see... Ah, I jumped into that. Well, this is, this is a really good example. Um, you know, you would think, oh, gee, you know, that's not fair. I couldn't see where I was going. Well, yes and no. Um, I think the game teaches you pretty early on in the first couple of stages that it is very important not to rush ahead. Uh, it's definitely more about that careful maneuvering, careful movement, learning enemy patterns, seeing what's ahead before you go anywhere. You can also uh, kind of hit... Oh, that was a cracked block. I'm paying attention to my commentary and not my actual thoughts there, which is funny because I'm pretty sure I did this on one life the first time through when I was doing it blind. Um, I think the game does an okay job of teaching you early on that, you know, you need to be careful, you need to be methodical, you can't just rush through a stage. I thought I might be able to get that. Um, this moth is going to come up here in a second. I can just avoid it. We can jump up here. Now these guys take quite a few hits if you don't have the shotgun. I think three or four hits a piece. So a crack block there, and you can see there's another one coming up too, so we'll jump up. Uh, hands pretty much always have items in them, except if you're playing on harder difficulties. I believe on nightmare mode, uh, there are no pickups, which is crazy. Alright, we'll jump over here. Uh, we can't shoot through here. Oh, there's a screaming skull. As annoying as that sound effect is, it's not loud enough to be, like, terrible, but it also kind of gives you a good warning that those things are coming. And we can actually jump over the top of the screen here and grab this. So I think getting the, all the max health upgrades also uh, turns the difficulty down quite a bit, too. Um, I imagine, you know, nightmare difficulty is incredibly difficult because everything is a one-hit kill. So you have enemies, like, are areas like this where... Uh, dodging seems almost impossible. I'm sure it's possible to dodge it. I haven't played it enough to do so. But again, you know, you have a lot of health. And there's pretty frequent health pickups on normal. Now, maybe you don't want to play it on normal. You want to play only in harder difficulties. You know, that's your choice. Um, I did 100% the game. Otherwise, I found all the hands. Um, and it did not take me very long. It was under an hour. Uh, again, you know, it's not a very long game. So we get these bottles coming through. Skulls. And this hobgoblin. I think it might actually be a nilbog. And there's a health pickup. I think we're getting towards the end of this level. Now there's only one section, and I'm not going to end up showing it off because again, I don't want to show too many levels of the game, but there is only one section. In the final auto scroller, there was a part where I felt like you really didn't have the time to react to what was coming. Um, even once you knew what was there, it felt almost a little too punishing. There's a, a crackle block and a, you know, a spinning mace, and it's just really, really punishing. Um, almost excessively so. That's probably really the only place in the game where I felt like the difficulty was unfair. Now I've got this awful sounding howl in the background. Again, I don't know if that's a sound effect from the movie. It, it probably is. The movie itself is public domain, and the developer apparently has talked to uh, the actors and such at this point, so that's kind of a cool thing, too. Our poor dog. So there must be something up here. 
that terrible, terrible sound. So again, here's another example where, you know, you see these blocks, your first instinct is to jump on them, right? Well, if you jump on them, then the dog doesn't hit you right off the bat. Um, he does have a pattern, but I'm not sure if he just reacts to your jumps or if he just has a standard pattern. Some of the enemies feel like they react a little more, kind of like uh, Metroid enemies, and some of them seem like they're set patterns, more like Mega Man or Castlevania enemies. Also, I imagine if you brought a shotgun all the way here, you'd probably be in really good shape. Alright, so this next section, and I won't actually do it, but this would be the, uh, the flight section. That would be Torgo speaking. So this is the flight section. Now again, this used to be a one-hit kill section. Um, it's still a one-hit crush. But uh, yeah, this is this is the flight section. So I really don't want to show off too much more because, again, I don't want to show off the whole game. It's not a very long game. You know, it's a cheap game. Uh, well, inexpensive game. I shouldn't really say cheap. Um, I think it's okay. Uh, I enjoyed it. I played through it. Like I said, I played through it to the, you know I got 100%. Um, and then I went back and I played through, try to see you know how bad is nightmare mode. Nightmare mode is everything is one hit kill. It is brutal. It's crazy, crazy difficult. So I think some of, you know, it's got positive, mostly positive reviews on Steam right now. I think some of the criticisms are good. I think some of them are just trying to play the game in a different way. I don't think it's necessarily bad design. I think it's a different design. Again, you know, I think it's more of a Castlevania style in terms of you have to be very methodical with movements, um, very methodical in pacing. And there's a lot of good things, too. I think the art is charming. You know, it's a pixel art thing. I think the cutscene art is really good. The music is good. Uh, the music is actually really good, I think. Um, the sound effects, you know, they're hit or miss. Some of them are okay. Some of them are a little grating, but intentionally so, I think. And, uh, in fact, actually, why don't I show off, just so I'm not showing off new things, but we can also start a Torgo game. Yeah. So, basically, all this does is a palette swap. Not, not really a palette swap. It's a, a sprite swap. And we play as Torgo. And Torgo actually does have... Um, different movements to an extent. He's got this momentum to him. There is an achievement for finishing the game on Torgo mode. Other than that, as far as I know, the game is identical. Um, might be a little different towards the end, but uh, yeah, so if you wanted to, you could play as Torgo too. Kind of a nice feature you unlock after you finish the game. So this is definitely a game that, you know, if you're into challenging games, or if you're into high scores, or it's something, you know, you're gonna play multiple times, I would definitely recommend it. If it's something you want to play through once, you know, I mean, that's your choice. It's it's charming enough that I think for for me, for five bucks, you know, what the hell. Um, five bucks for me for a game that's, you know, maybe an hour long is fine. Now, I know for a lot of people that would be a poor investment, but, you know, for me, that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm fine with small games. I'm kind of like Olympia Rising, which I covered recently. You know, that game was five dollars, and I think my first playthrough was um, under two hours. You know, again, it was a short game, but I enjoyed it. So, yeah, if you're into this sort of thing, if you're a fan of the movie, um, ironically so or not, I think this is an okay game. If you liked um, AVGN Adventures, this is definitely very, very similar to that. So, yeah, I hope that uh, kind of levies some constructive criticism and gives my thoughts on the game. And you free to leave a comment below if you've played it or if you have any questions about it and uh, see what I can do. And uh, the developer is very active on the forums, too. So if you have, you know, questions about the game or something, I'm sure he would uh, answer them for you. Again, you know, I have no affiliation with him. He just gave me a review code, um, and I follow him on Twitter. So that's my full disclosure there. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you soon.